A step down transformer. A transformer connected to a 120 volts RMS AC line is to supply 12 volts RMS to a portable electronic device. The load resistance in the secondary is 5 ohms. What should the ratio of primary to secondary turns of the transformer be? What RMS current must the secondary supply? What average power is delivered to the load? And in part D, what resistance connected directly across the 120 volt line would draw the same power as the transformer? Show that this is equal to 5 ohms times the square of the ratio of primary to secondary turns. Okay, so this is the equivalent circuit we have in the source 120 volts RMS AC. And uh, we have N1 windings in the primary and two windings in the secondary so that the voltage that appears across the secondary coil is delta V2, which is the voltage that would appear on the load resistance, which is 5 ohms. And we're given that this uh, voltage is to be 12 volts. Now in part A, uh, since the flux, flux, uh, magnetic flux 5 sub B through the primary and the secondary coils is the same. We have uh, no leakage flux in the ideal transformer. The voltage that appears across the primary coil Delta V1 is given by Faraday's law minus the number of turns in the primary coil N1 derivative of the flux d 5 b dt and similarly the voltage that appears across the secondary coil delta V2 is minus the secondary number of turns in the secondary winding uh, times the derivative of magnetic flux d phi b dt. So because these two fluxes are the same, we can see that the ratio delta v1 divided by delta v2 is equal to the ratio of the number of turns n1 divided by and 2. So uh, this is the ratio. Now we have uh, delta V1 is equal to 120 volts RMS and delta V2 is equal to 12 volts RMS. Now we can find the ratio of the number of windings. Uh, delta V1, 120, divided by delta V2, which is 12, is N1 over N2. So we find that the ratio N1 over N2 should be equal to 10. All right, now uh, in part B of the problem, what RMS current must the secondary supply? In part B, we have uh, delta V2 RMS This is the current that will flow through the resistor I2 RMS multiplied by the resistance. That's according to Ohm's law. So this gives us for the RMS current I2 RMS 
delta v2 RMS divided by the load resistance. So I2 RMS is 12 volts divided by 5 ohms. So we find that the secondary current, RMS current, is 2.40 amperes. Okay. Now let's move on to part C of the problem. Part C asks us what average power is delivered to the load. The average power uh, delivered to the load, average value of the power delivered to the load is equal to the RMS current, I2 RMS current squared times the load resistance. So the average power delivered will be 2.4 square times 5. Therefore, we find the average power delivered to the load to be 28.8 watts. So this is twenty eight point eight watts. Let's move on to part D of the problem. In part D, what resistance connected directly across the one hundred twenty volt line would draw the same power as the transformer? Show that this is equal to 5 ohms times the square of the ratio of primary to secondary turns. So we have a conservation of uh, power here. The input power is equal to output power because we're assuming no leakage of the flux. So that means the input power, which is I1 times delta V1, must be equal to the output power. I2 times delta V2. So I1 can also be written as delta V1 divided by the equivalent resistance seen by the primary. And I2 is delta V2 divided by the load resistance. So all these values are in RMS. So for I1, if I substitute delta V1 over R equivalent, this equation becomes delta V1 squared divided by R equivalent is equal to delta V2 squared divided by R load so that my equivalent resistance can be written as R load times delta V1 over delta V2 squared. So it is delta V1 squared divided by delta V2 squared. So my equivalent resistance R equivalent is R load because I have shown in part A that delta V1 over delta V2 is N1 over N2, N1 over N2 squared. So this is basically what we were asked to show. So with that, the equivalent resistance becomes 5 times the ratio of the number of turns, 10 uh, squared which is going to give us the equivalent resistance in the primary to be 500 ohms. Okay, so um, we have shown that it is the load resistance times the ratio of the number of turns squared. Uh, so 
this resistance, equivalent resistance, as you can see in the circuit, if it were to be connected here, it would be drawing the same average power as the load resistance. So R equivalent connected across the AC line would draw the same average power. All right. So in this problem, we have looked at a step down transformer. So we have a 120 volt RMS input, which is converted to 12 volts RMS output. The, since the flux through the primary and secondary coils in a transformer, in an ideal transformer, is the same, uh, using Faraday's law, we can see that the ratio of the voltages is the ratio of the number of turns, which is 10 in this case. Now, uh, there is a load resistance 5 ohms connected to the secondary. Uh, what RMS current uh, should this uh, secondary supply? Well, it's the the load, uh, the voltage that appears on the load is 12 volts. So 12 volts divided by 5 ohms, 2.4 amps is the RMS current. What is the power delivered to the load? Well, it is I square R. That's the power dissipated by the resistor. So 2.4 squared times 5, 28.8 watts. And uh, what resistance connected directly across the 120 volt line would draw the same power as the transformer. So input power is equal to output power. I1 delta V1 is equal to I2 delta V2. And uh, since I1 can be written as delta V1 over R equivalent and I2 can be written as delta V2 over R load, assuming that I have a load resistor here uh, on which uh, there appears this uh, voltage delta V1. Uh, so in that case, uh, the equivalent resistance can be seen to be the load resistance multiplied by delta V1 over delta V2 parentheses squared. So it's R load times N1 over N2 squared. So it, it would be 500 ohms. So our equivalent connected across the AC line would draw the same average power. So uh, this would be uh, connected across the AC line and it would draw the same average power. 